Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking over the bosses out of From Software's catalogue that absolutely terrified us. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Leechmonger Demon Solves Sometimes it's the simplest things that are the most potent, and in this instance, the most disgusting. Even amongst storm kings and dragon gods, the idea of fighting a sentient swarm of leeches still gets under our skin. While peppering it with fireballs from a distance might sound like the ideal option, the leechmonger's tendency to throw bits of itself as projectiles dashes that hope. Just being in the general vicinity of this thing makes for an uncomfortable experience, made all the worse thanks to the remake rendering every leech in grotesque detail. Iberitus, Daughter of the Cosmos, Bloodborne Out of all the Lovecraftian horrors this game throws our way, few captured that sense of otherworldliness quite like this great one. Before you even have a chance to figure out what you're even looking at, Abritus will be all over you, tentacles and all. Though maybe that's a mercy because the longer you look at it, the worse she gets, especially when her face starts to open up. And that's all before she starts calling for aid from beyond and burying the battlefield in cosmic bombardments. Adjudicator, Demon Souls. It might be one of the easier enemies to overcome, but that doesn't mean we want to get anywhere near this hulking mass nor its elongated tongue. The shimmering bird perched atop its missing cranium might be enough to distract you for a moment, but then you get a good look at that bloated frame and lashing tongue, and you're reminded you're in the middle of a Souls game. And again, the remake makes this thing a million times more disturbing to look at. Astel, natural born of the void, Elden Ring. If this was what Radan was keeping at bay, then we owe him an apology, because Astel is absolutely the kind of thing that should not exist. An entity far removed from the lands between, dealing with its penchant for sniping at us from miles away is bad enough. But then you get to see it up close and realize that maybe staying at a distance was the best bet. Between the insectoid body comprised of stardust and the skull face with inbuilt pincers, Astel gave us new reasons to fear what lay beyond the night sky. The One Reborn, Bloodborne. This is what happens when a blood-obsessed cult tries to fling itself into godhood. A colossal mass of undead bodies all merged into one. This entity is all about the gore factor. Its ligaments strewn together with the bloodied flesh of innumerable corpses, which you'll get to see up close as it tries to smash you under the weight of its misshapen form. While you'll have a harder time dealing with the Chime Maidens that surround it, the One Reborn is an unsettling creation, and a stark reminder of what can happen to those that try to play around with Ascension. The Duke's Dear Freya, Dark Souls 2 
It's a giant spider. Do we need to say anything else? There will never not be a time where a giant spider in a fantasy setting is not a terrifying prospect. Granted, FromSoft made it all the worse by giving it two heads, one on each end of its massive body. While it surrounds itself with its eight-legged minions, the fact anyone could keep this thing as a pet is beyond us. Quite frankly, we'd love to incinerate its entire nest in Dragonfire and be done with it. But as with all things Soulsborne, it's never that easy. Aldric, Devourer of Gods, Dark Souls 3. There are many powers at work within the Kingdom of Lothric, many contenders to reignite the first flame. But out of all of them, the one that fills us with the most dread would be the so-called Saint of the Deep. Aldric's past as a cannibalistic madman would be unsettling enough. But the fact he indulged to such an extent he became a giant blob that now feasts on deities and uses their bodies as puppets? That's a whole other level of messed up. Poor Gwendolyn. Not even he deserved that. Guardian 8. Sekiro. Shadows die twice. This is a bit of a one-two punch. By itself, the Guardian 8, while ferocious and sure to keep you on your toes, at the end of the day is nothing more than a giant beast. And then the second phase starts. Oh shit, here we go again. After decapitating it via Shinobi execution, the ape reveals itself to still be alive, where it casually picks up its severed head to continue the fight, which is all made possible due to a giant centipede lurking inside its wound and taking control of the body. The sheer panic we felt from this switch up cannot be understated. Rikard, Lord of Blasphemy, Elden Ring. Because it can never just be a snake, can it? Upon taking down the god-devouring serpent, which by itself is no easy feat, the true enemy reveals itself in the creepiest way possible. Together we will devour the very god. Turns out Rykod's actual body lurks underneath, which we learn courtesy of one hell of a face reveal. Follow that up by him pulling a giant sword out of the mouth of the snake carcass he shares a body with, and you've got a boss that will give you serious regrets about taking up the journey to become Elden Lord. Ludwig, the Accursed, Bloodborne. <laughs> Quite possibly Miyazaki's masterpiece, every aspect of Ludwig chills us to the core. An amalgamation of beast, man and blood, this once gallant knight is now the stuff of nightmares. While his second phase does somewhat redeem his soul as he takes up arms like a warrior would, there's no getting over how Ludwig is the definition of horrifying. The hellish screams certainly don't help. Honestly, until FromSoft returns to the gothic genre, we don't see how they could ever hope to top this. Which Souls character still haunts your dreams? Let us know in the comments. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.